Today on this old house, it's time to start finishes. And today, it's the coffered ceiling. Our septic system goes from concept to construction. And we come to farm country in Ohio to see our hardwood doors made. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. How okay. excited are you guys to see that? Extremely. Right? You're going to have to choke down some dust first, though, before you get to that part. <laughs> oh, yeah. Long way. Money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here in Westerly, Rhode Island. We started off with a ranch house built in 1949 and it was a single story, low slung building that ran the length of the property right here. Well, as you can see, we are making some changes. We are turning this into a Dutch colonial and nothing says that more than this gable end side right here and that gambrel roof. So it starts off with a shallow pitch up top and then breaks into a steeper pitch. And then it's got this beautiful bell curve right here between the second story and the first story. Lots of details going in, windows and trim. Hey Adam, how you doing? We've also got white cedar shingles all over the exterior of the building. Beautiful job by Jeff and his guys, including a nice subtle little detail like this. That little flare right there, that is a nice touch. Now we've got a lot of changes going on inside as well. We started off with a dark building, every wall and even the ceilings were covered with knotty pine. Those ceilings were low and the rooms, well, they were all chopped up. Well, look at what we have got now. The ceilings were pushed up by a foot, the space was completely opened up, and we've got ourselves a wall of glass going off the back of the house. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Tommy. Hey, Kevin. How are you? So you guys are thinking the ceilings today. Coffered ceilings at that, and That's a lot nice. of them. That's a nice touch. So what we started with was, remember, we put this beam in, and this is an 18-inch beam, and that holds the second floor. But the problem is, is that we hang down into the room four inches. Right. So that defines the space and, and change, you know, we've got a living room and dining room here. It defines the space, but we need to use the coffered ceiling to disguise that beam. And right. we're going to create a system to do that. So coffered ceiling from this beam going this way? Exactly. Right. So, got it. So you have that heavy beam right there, that 18 inch beam. That's, that's the carrying beam, but it defines these two spaces. All right. And in terms of the profile that we are going to look at, you guys made us this? Well, it's actually not really for you, but it's nice to see <laughs> what it's going to look like. But this is key when you're laying out a ceiling like this. It's good to make the actual size. So it's just made out of one by five stock, one by five stock, five quarter stock, and the crown moldings. The idea of this is we can take it, lay it on the floor, the amount of beams that we need, measure from that, and then transfer all those measurements to the ceiling. Everything will be right on. We ready for layout? Yes, we are. Now this piece here represents the piece that's going to go along the side of that beam there. There's going to be another one on the other side, and then we'll fill it in with a piece of finished trim. Yep. Okay, and we place that right on the floor, just like this, in the orientation that it goes. So that's our left edge in this room. Right. On that side. So this side we have, we're actually going to step it off to create half a beam off this wall. So we've simulated half inch, which is our drywall, and then the half beam, which goes like that. Right. Now we have to divide this space up three in three spaces equally. Yep. And the easiest way to do that is take these, put them up against the face of that, and we're going to measure from the face of those pieces on this side. So this is your point, Tommy, that these mock-ups weren't for me. These are your actual no, measurements. They were definitely not for you. <laughs> so this is the sort of total of your negative space? Right. It's 12 foot. A little over a quarter of an inch. We divide that by three. We have 48 and a sixteenth, 48 and a sixteenth, 48 and a sixteenth. Perfectly divided right down here. So that's where we end up with our new beams. Everything else is the negative right. space. So now we'll place those in the position that they go down here. We'll divide up our space. Let's hold this at 48 and a sixteenth here. So, Garrett, if you put yours to 48 and a sixteenth, Jeff, that's what you should be left over with? Exactly. 48 and a 16. 
All right, now that our pieces are all set exactly where they're gonna go, we have to transfer all those measurements to the other side of the room. What we don't wanna measure, we're actually gonna use a layout stick to transfer the measurements. A story pole for coffered ceiling, Tommy? A story pole is always smart because if you have a measurement off, even if it's an eighth or a quarter of an inch, it's not gonna be right. All right, so now we'll just take this and push it tight against the outside wall down there and we can lay it, lay it on the floor and transfer the marks to the floor or just leave it there and use those lines. So with the laser, once it's lined up with the line on that end and down here on our stick, it will also transfer a line right up to the ceiling we'll know exactly where the beams need to go. So the pieces that are going on the ceiling now actually find the location for this beam, but it also holds the top of the beam in the right orientation, and it also will give you a place to fasten to if you need to. So when I put it up there, Jeff will slide it around there, you can see how it looks. It's gonna go right up there, just like that. 177 and 5 eighths. All right, so this layered, you can start to see the car for design right here. You have a big rectangle. The beams will be built in place. And the nice thing about this opening, it's 48 inches wide. So a sheet of plywood will fit right in there, and it's short enough so there'll be no seams anywhere. No seams, no plaster. It's going to be a nice painted look. Exactly. Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. We've learned about Westerly Granite, and the homeowners are very interested in incorporating this into their landscape plan. So, Rick, this is the last granite fabrication shop in Westerly. Yes, Camoli Granite is. It's a fourth generation granite carving shop. My great grandfather came over from Italy to start the trade and then passed down to myself. I'm a fourth generation granite cutter, and Camoli Granite has been around since 1986. So Jen, here we have a piece of the Westerly Pink Coarse Granite that we're gonna use for the seven steps going up to the main landing. Okay. This, this slab right here is about six foot long, so we're gonna try to get two steps out of it. 32 inches in depth by about 42 inches in length. So we'll utilize every inch. We're gonna use every inch of this stone. All right, Jen, the cut is finished. And as you can see down here, it's a precise cut, nice and smooth, straight wow, as an it's arrow. Just Super smooth. So now we're gonna do the rock face technique, right? Now we're gonna do a teach you how to do the live edge. All right, let's let's. I cannot wait to do that. I mean, it's a beautiful clean cut, but I want to get the the chiseled effect. All right, let's do it. All right. Nice. That's satisfying. Go a bit more. Slide it this way so we can get more of the bite. Yeah. Now we're uh, going back to the line. This is the top of the step. We're going to finish it right back to the line with the chipper. All right, so this, so this will be the tread surface when you walk up. So this, this needs to be clean so no one's shoe catches on it. You right? got it. We're going right. to hit it with the chipper. Then we're going to take a little uh, pumice wheel and just take off the sharp edge by hand. OK. Yeah, this is definitely sharp. How are we going to trim that down? What we have here, Jen, is a pumice stone. That's going to get rid of that sharp edge you just felt from before. So take it on the edge, kind of go in a circular motion all the way down. And as you can see, when I'm done, it's knocking that sharp razor-like edge is going to be off of there. We're just rounding it off very slightly. Now feel that now. Do you, does it feel a lot smoother? There's no jags. It's just, yeah, yep. that works perfect. So we just have to rock face these two sides. This is the first finish edge and six more to go. Sounds good. I look forward to getting them set. All right, thank you.
Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Our project did not have the option of a town sewer. Because of its location so close to the water, we needed a really sophisticated septic system. Some weeks ago, we saw the design come together, and, and this included all kinds of pumps and tanks and chambers and vaults. And today, after weeks of rain, it's finally time to get it installed. Rick Pezzer's going to explain everything to us. How are you, Rick? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Some serious industry here. That's exactly right. Why don't you take us through it? Uh, what we're standing on right now is a 1,500 gallon two compartment septic tank. Okay. This first compartment, open this up for you. All right, so right here is where the main drain is going to come from the house to right here into this tank. That's exactly right. This is the trash side of the tank, so pretty much everything from the home okay. will drop into this first compartment. So liquids and solids go there, bacteria starts to work on it a little bit. That's correct, and it'll the, the solids will either float to the top or settle out and sink to the bottom. Okay leaving a, uh, a dirty zone of water in the center. Okay. That water will pass through into the second compartment through a baffle wall. Okay. And so the, baffle means it doesn't come all the way up, it's just uh, short. There's an opening of 22 to 24 inches off Got the it. bottom of the tank okay. that allows the water to pass into the okay. second compartment. Oh, good. There it Let goes me away. push this out of the way. All right. And what happens here is this pump vault here will sit in the bottom. So this goes down into here. That's exactly okay. right. We have this filter that fits on this side of the compartment. So this slides down here, water works its way in through these small holes right here. Through these holes here? Yeah. And into this screen, I'm with effluent, you. it comes out through the side yeah. and then passes into the second compartment of this vault with that pump that you're holding. Oh, I see. So sits. there's another chamber right here that the, the stainless steel submersible pump goes down into. Right. Water works its way up and over and fills this chamber. Correct. And about every 20 minutes, it sends a purge of water up to our treatment pod. And this is where we introduce our second part of the system. Okay. Let's open this baby up. Oh yeah. So like I was saying earlier, every 20 minutes or so, water from that second compartment gets purged into the system. So it comes up through these little caps That's right correct. here and then drips down over these sheets. The hanging sheets, which this now is giving it a media for our bugs to live. Okay. So this is basically one of those hanging sheets. So here's the sheets and all kinds of bugs that love oxygen will be living here. And so what's it do? How's it work? So what it's doing, it's taking that wastewater stream from our second compartment yeah. and converting the ammonia that's being added to this compartment, okay. it's converting the ammonia into nitrogen. Okay. So it's highly oxygenating that wastewater stream by the conversion to nitrogen. Okay, so ammonia becomes nitrogen and water falls down to the bottom. That's correct. It and collects at the bottom of this yep. pod, yep. returns back to the first compartment of our septic tank, yep. and there, this highly oxygenated liquid is introduced to an anaerobic zone, A which has no, has no oxygen. And those bugs there are looking for that oxygen. They eat the oxygen out of the nitrogen, convert it from a liquid to a gas, and it goes into the atmosphere. And Nitrogen in the atmosphere, not a problem. Nitrogen in the groundwater is a problem. Okay. So take me through what, what we're seeing here. What we have here is what's called a bottomless sand filter. This is basically the last polishing of the effluent before it reaches the receiving soil. All right, good. The pump will kick on, purge the laterals, the water disperses through the sand filter. Are you ready to go? Groundwater. I'm ready to go. Let's, let's get rolling, come on. All righty. For all of the interior doors in this house, Scott and Shayla wanted a wooden beefy door. They ended up with a four panel design and there's a lot going on with this door. When you look at this cross section, the first thing you'll notice is that it's a little extra thick. Most doors are about an inch and three eighths. This is an inch and three quarters. And look at this construction. There's a solid piece of wood here, a second one, a third one, and then a fourth one making up the styles. And then the rails are led into that and then the whole thing is veneered, and right here in the middle is an MDF panel. You know, there's enough going on with this door that we thought it made sense to go to Ohio and see the made in the factory. Welcome to Bucolic Canfield, Ohio, farm country. 
and to the Baird family farm, or at least it was back in 1960 when this operation started. Terry, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Kevin. So a family affair, right? Yes, yes it is. And so give me the scope of what you guys are doing now. Uh, a good way to say it is anything you can put in your house that involves hardwood, we manufacture here. There you go. Well, we've come to see how our interior doors are made, so can we have a look? You bet, Steve will show you around for that. All right, let's do it. So we no longer saw the lumber on site here from the logs, but we purchase it in. And once we get it here, we start to take care of it and manage our natural resource. Okay, Kevin, so we find ourselves in our grading shed. And what's going on here, as you can see behind us, uh, Gary is grading the lumber. In grading the lumber, that involves checking for the quality of the grade, this being an FAS material, first and second, five quarter white oak, and also for the volume. You know, we receive this lumber, it's 60-80% moisture content off of off the green sawn logs, and we have to take it down to a 6 to 8% mm. moisture content. So how long does that take? About six days uh, on a normal poplar cycle. Uh, some of the other species, some of the oaks and, and other species, other thicknesses, it could extend out to six to eight weeks. Oh, that's a lot of heat. Definitely. So are you guys using all of your waste and all of your cutoffs to make that heat? Yeah, definitely, very small footprint. We grind everything into a sawdust consistency. It's transferred over to a, uh, a boiler facility where it's burnt, generating steam and heat uh, for the dry kilns, for some of the heating of the, the buildings on the facility. Uh, that's part of it. The other part is through our uh, electric generators. These here? Those there. Uh, we have gas wells on the property. That like natural gas wells? Natural gas wells running natural gas generators. And then that in turn produces heat too. So in conjunction with that and capturing that heat coming off of those generators and those engines, that too wow. goes into that dry kiln process. So cogeneration, electricity and heat. About three megs worth. Wow. So this is from the kiln? This is from the dry kiln. So this is dried poplar ready for manufacturing. And this is the first step of our manufacturing process here. What we're seeing here is the stuck lumber being knocked down, lumber coming across. It'll traverse through a planer. That planer is addressing both faces equally. So when it comes out, we have a nice flat surface on both faces of the lumber. Heads over to a saw. Heads over to an automatic gang rip saw that when that board and its index number gets to that saw, the saw automatically adjusts on air collars and resets itself for that board. So if that, if that board was assigned three laser lights, it'll adjust to three saw blades. If it was assigned four, it'll go four, up to six. Yeah. Now that we've cleaned up the edges of the board, we gotta, we gotta take care of little knot issues like this along the body of the board. This machine does that. It's an MRI for wood. It's taking a picture of the board's going through that quickly? Takes a picture of the board, identifies the defect. Right there. Ear tags it, sends it down the line to another saw that'll identify it to have it be cut out. That's optimizing our natural resource. But that's not all that comes out of this building. We produce a lot of these drops or these cutoffs. Yeah, that's actually still some pretty good looking stuff. Straight and clear too. Still real high quality poplar material here. We can do something real neat with that. After that finger joiner glue's applied, then we start the reassembly process. In reassembling these pieces, they interlock together with that finger joint, filling a jig 16 foot long where the material is cut, then clamped for that 16 foot length. Now we have uh, a molding blank ready for the next milling operation. All those little cutoffs have got this beautiful 16 foot long piece. They didn't go to waste. So here's where we make our face veneers for our door styles. Uh, put five pieces in, enters a saw, goes into 15 band saw blades, move up and down. Blades being right there? Yeah, those are the blades. They move up and down. And coming out, we'll have 20 face veneers when it's all done. OK, Kev, as you can see, our face veneers have been applied to the core for our door styles. Yep. 
and we're sending them through the motor. As you can see, with one pass, one pass through the motor, both edges and both faces have been addressed. Profiled edges, profiled faces, and then a groove cut in ready to receive that flat panel for our Craftsman style door. Okay, so now that we have all the parts and pieces and all the boring done, we're getting ready for assembly on this uh, four panel door. Well, there we go, Kev. We got some doors for you. Got some really good looking doors. So uh, we appreciate everything you guys are doing for us. It's no surprise you've been in business for over three generations. So thank you. Hey, our pleasure. Thank you guys. All right. All right. Take care. Jeff, Tommy, after what I just saw at the factory, I'm impressed with the door. What about you guys? Oh Very my gosh. impressed. Just lift it. <laughs> Heavy door? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Probably about 90 pounds. I would say 90 pounds. So the extra weight's going to make you think about how to hang the door a little bit differently. And I can tell from the flashing <laughs> lights on me that you think about hanging doors a little bit uh, different from Tom Silva, who's used to a plumb bob. Yep. Uh, but you seem to be a laser guy. Well, we're going to step it up and use a little bit more technology and uh, use a laser to uh, plumb our opening here. Hey, my laser never goes bad. <laughs> it never runs out of batteries. batteries. <laughs> so what's your process, Jeff? So the first thing I did is I created a story pole locating the hinged locations onto the this from the door. Okay. Now, and I want to think about the weight of this door. We're going to install it the same, but we're going to use a longer screw and we're going to use a solid shim instead of a adjustable cedar shim. In this case, we're plumb, so we're going to go with quarter inch and that way that we're roughly centered in the opening. And when we put that jam tight to those fillers, that will be plumb. But the next thing we have to check is the header to see if it's level. And how's that look, Kevin? I'd come up a little more on that left side. Right there is good. Okay. And we'll do the same thing down near the bottom. So we're going to take one more step and we're going to remove one of the smaller screws and replace it with a longer screw, same style, stainless steel. That way we get right into the jack stud. You got your hinge pins? I got them. All right. Good. All right, you ready to shim the other side? Yep. All right, that's good. Let me get mine in. All right, that's good reveal right there. OK, let me tack it. All right. All right. Okay. Nice. So All we've right. got ourselves a solid, maybe 90 pound door and just swings effortlessly. Yeah. That is nice. Right. All we're going to do now is cut off the shims and it's ready for the casing. Right. Feels good to get some of our first finished details in. Yeah. All right. So next time, Richard is going to help us bury a thousand gallon propane tank in the backyard. Until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Jeff Sweener. And I'm Tom Silva. For this old house here in Westerly, Rhode Island. Nice doors. Cut these right off. Yeah. Let's go. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.